Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partner. Welcome back to theCUBE here in San Diego for KubeCon CloudNativeCon with John Troyer. I'm Stu Miniman and happy to welcome to the program uh, two guests, uh, first time guests I believe, uh, Julio, Julio Tapia, uh, who's the director of Cloud BU Partner and Community uh, with Red Hat, and Gu Rao, who's the founder and CTO at Portworks. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. All right, let, let, let's start with uh, you know, community, ecosystem. It's a big theme we have here at the show. Sure. Um, <laughs> you, you know, to, to tell us kind of your main focus, what uh, the team's doing here. Sure, so, um, so I'm part of a product team. We're responsible for OpenShift, OpenStack, and Red Hat virtualization and my responsibility is to build the partner ecosystem and to do our community development. Uh, on the partner front, we work with a lot of different partners. We work with ISVs, we work with OEMs, SIs, cloud providers, telco partners. And my role is to help evangelize, to help on integrations, a lot of joint solutions, and then do a little bit of go to market as well. And on the community side, it's uh, to evangelize with uh, upstream uh, projects, with customers, uh, with developers and so forth. All right, so Gu, actually, it, as, as it's not luck, but uh, you know, I had a chance to catch up with the Red Hat storage team. Uh, one, back when I was on the vendor side, I, I partnered with them. Yeah. You know, Red Hat doesn't sell gear, you know, they, they, they are a software company and yep. everything open source, and when, when it comes to you know, data and storage, obviously they're, they're working with partners. So pull Portworks into the mix and uh, uh, tell us about the relationship and what, what you both do together. Sure, yeah, uh, we're a Red Hat OpenShift partner. We've been uh, working with them for, for, for quite some time now. Partner with IBM as well. Um, but yeah, Portworks, we uh, focus on uh, enabling cloud native storage, right? So we complement the OpenShift ecosystem. Essentially, we enable people to run stateful services uh, in OpenShift uh, with a lot of agility, and we bring um, uh, DR backup uh, functionality to OpenShift. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but you know, people, when they deploy OpenShift, they're running fleets of OpenShift clusters, so multi-cluster management and uh, um, Data accessibility across clusters is a big topic. Yeah, actually, if, if you could, and I hear the term, you know, cloud native storage. What does that really mean? You know, back a few years ago, it was, you know, containers were stateless. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have my persistent storage. It was super yeah. challenging as to how we deal with this. Um, and and now we have some options. But what is what is the goal of sure. you know yeah. what we're doing here? You know, there really is no notion of a stateless application, right? Especially when it comes to enterprise applications. What cloud native storage means is, um, to us at least, it, it, uh, it uh, signifies a couple of things. First of all, pro the consumer of storage is not a machine anymore, right? Typical storage systems are designed to provide storage to either a virtual machine or, or a, a hardware server. The consumer of storage is now a container that's running inside of a machine, and in fact, an application is never just one container, it's many containers running on different systems, so it's a distributed problem. So what cloud native storage means is the following things. Providing container granular data services, being application aware, meaning that you're providing services to many containers that are running on different systems, and facilitating the data lifecycle management of those applications from a Kubernetes way, right? The user experience is now driven through Kubernetes as opposed to a storage admin driving that functionality. So it's these three things that make a platform cloud native. Hmm. I want to dig into the operator concept for a little bit here as it applies to storage. So yeah. uh, you now have, so first operators. Uh, I first heard of this a couple years back with the CoreOS folks who are now part of Red Hat and sure. it's a, a piece of technology that came into the Kubernetes ecosystem, seems to be very well adopted. They talked about it today on the keynote yeah. and, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about the ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, but first I want to figure out what it is and, and sure. I was in my head, I, I didn't quite understand it and I'm like, well, okay, automation and life cycle, I get it. There, there's a bunch of things, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, Puppet and Chef and, and Ansible and uh, you know all sorts of things there. There's also things that know about cloud like Terraform or Cloudforms or you know all, you know uh, Pulumi, all these sort of things here. But this seems like it's a little bit. This was this is a this is a framework around lifecycle. It might be a little higher in the semantic level or or knows a little bit more about what what's going on inside Maybe Kubernetes. I'll just touch on yeah. it. So um, operators is a way to codify business logic okay. into the. Okay. Uh, application. So how to manage, how to install, how to manage the life cycle of the application on top of the Kubernetes cluster. So it's a way of automating. Okay. 
Right, yeah, and, but, but, and just to add to that, right, uh, you mentioned Ansible, Salt, right? So as, as, a, uh, as engineers, we're always trying to make our lives easier, right? And so uh, infrastructure automation uh, certainly is, is a concept here where what operators does is it elevates those same needs to and more of an application construct level, right? So it's a piece of intelligent software that is watching the entire runtime of an application as opposed to provisioning infrastructure and stepping out of the way. Think of it as a living being. It is constantly running and reacting to what the application is doing and what its needs are. So um, on one hand, you have automation that sets things up and then the job is done. Here the job is never done. You're sort of the, um, uh, you know, right there as a sidecar along with the application. Nice, nice. But for any sort of life cycle or any sort of uh, project like this, you have to have code sharing and contributing, right? And so, can you, Julia, can you yeah, tell us a little sure. bit about so that? What we do is we're obviously all in on operators, and so yeah. we've invested a, a great deal in terms of documentation and training and workshops. We have certification programs. We're really helping create the ecosystem and facilitate the whole process. Um, you may be familiar, we, op we announced Operator Framework a few year, a year ago. It includes uh, uh, Operator SDKs. So we have an Operator SDK for Helm, for Ansible, for Go. We also uh, have announced Operator Lifecycle Manager, which does the install, the maintenance, and the whole lifecycle management process. And then earlier this year, we did introduce also OperatorHub.io, which is a community of our operators. We have about 150 operators as part of that. How, how does the operator framework uh, relate to OpenShift and, and versus kind of upstream Kubernetes? Is it an is it open, open shift and Red Hat specific thing or? or? Yeah, so, um, so we, OperatorHub.io is a, 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 a listing of operators that includes community operators. Uh, and then we also have certified operators. And those operator, the community operators run on any Kubernetes instance. Uh, the certified operators make sure that we run on OpenShift specifically. So that's kind of the distinction between those two. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember at Red Hat Summit, uh, we talked about it some bit, so t give us a little kind of walk around the show uh, with some of the highlights uh, from operators. Uh, the ecosystem, obviously we've got Portworx yeah, here, sure. but there's a broad ecosystem. Yeah, so we have a huge, huge ecosystem. Uh, the ISVs play a big part of this. So we've got operators, uh, database partners, security partners, uh, app monitoring partners, storage partners. Um, Yesterday we had a, an OpenShift Commons event and we showcased five of our big uh, operator partnerships with Couchbase, with MongoDB, with Portworks obviously, with Storage OS, and with Dynatrace. Um, but we have a lot of partners in a lot of different areas that are creating these operators, they're certifying them, and they're starting to get a lot of use with customers. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, cool. I, I'd love your viewpoint on this because, of course, Portworks, good Red Hat partner, but you need to work with all the Kubernetes opt-ins out there. So what, what, what's the importance of operators to your business? Yeah, you know, it, OpenShift, obviously, you know, um, it's, it's, it's one of the leading platforms for Kubernetes out there. And so, um, all right. The, the reason that is, it, it's because it, it's sort of the expectations that it sets to an enterprise customer. It's, it's, it's that Red Hat experience behind it. And so the notion of uh, um, having an operator that's certified by Red Hat, right, and uh, a Red Hat going through the vetting process and making sure that all of the components that it is recommending from its ecosystem that you're putting it into, put it, putting onto OpenShift, that whole process gives a, a whole new level of enterprise experience. So for us, that's been really good, right? Working with Red Hat, going through the process with them and making sure that, and they're, they're actually double clicking on everything we submit and there's a real, you know, we iterate with them. Um, um, and it's, so it, the quality of the product that's put out there within OpenShift is, is very high. So, um, We've, we've uh, deployed these operators now, the operator that um, Portworx just announced, right? We've had it, uh, we, we have it running in customers' hands, so these are real end users. You'll be talking to Ford later on today, um, Harvard, for example, and so the level of automation that it has provided to them in their platform is, um, is quite high. I was kind of curious to shift maybe to the conference here, that you all have a long history, uh, both organizations and both of you personally in the Kubernetes world and cloud native world. We're here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, North America, 2019. It's pretty big. Uh, huge, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I see a lot of folks here, a lot of vendors, a lot of engineers, a huge conference, 12,000 people. I mean, any, any perspective? Uh, and I, so I've been at Red Hat a little over six years and I was at the very first KubeCon many uh, years ago in San Francisco. Uh, uh, I think we had about 200 people there. So this show has really grown over the years. Um, and, uh, and we're obviously big supporters. We've participated in uh, KubeCon in Shanghai and Barcelona. 
we're obviously here. Um, we've just super excited about seeing the ecosystem and the whole community grow and expand, so very exciting. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, like Julio mentioned, right? So all the way from DockerCon to you know where we are today, and I think last year was 8,000 people in uh, Seattle, and I think they're uh, probably, 12? I've heard numbers like 12. Uh, so it, it's, but uh, it's also equally interesting to see the maturity of the products around Kubernetes, and that, and that level of consistency and, and lack of fracture, right? From mainstream Kubernetes, there's uh, to um, how it's being adopted in OpenShift. There's consistency across the different Kubernetes platforms. Um, also, um, it's very interesting to see how on-prem and uh, public cloud Kubernetes are coexisting. So that's been uh, four years ago. We were kind of worried on how that would turn out, but I think it's uh, enabling those hybrid cloud workloads. And I think today in in this uh, KubeCon. We see a lot of people talking about that and having interest around it. Yeah, that's a really great point there. Uh, Julio, I want to give you the final word uh, for, for people that aren't yet engaged in the e ecosystem of, of operators, uh, you know, how, how can they learn more and get involved? Yeah, so we're excited to work with everybody. Our ecosystem includes customers, partners, contributors, so as long as you're all in on operators, we're ready to help. And we've got tools, we've got documentation, we have workshops, we have training, we have certification programs, and we also can help you with go-to-market. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a huge customer footprint, and so for those partners that have um, solutions, uh, databases, storage solutions, there's a lot of joint opportunities out there that we can participate in, so really excited to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, you have a yeah. final word? Oh, no, or? I was just yeah. uh, going to say, uh, again, the, the, so to follow up on the operator comment uh, on the certification that uh, Julio had mentioned earlier, so the operator that we have, um, we were able to achieve level five certification, which, um, the, the, the level five the, the signifies just the amount of automation that's built into it. So the concept of, of um, having operators um, uh, help people deploy these complex applications, that's a very important con concept in Kubernetes itself. So glad to be a Red Hat partner. Yeah, that's that. actually a really good point. We, we have an operator maturity model, uh, level one, two, three, four, five. Level one and two are more your uh, installations and upgrades but the really highly capable ones, the fours and fives, are really uh, to be commended, and Portworks is one of those partners. Yep. So we're excited to be here that, with that, them. That is a powerful statement. We talk about the complexity and how many pieces are in there. Um, everybody's looking for, to, to really help you know, cross that chasm and get the vast majority of people. We need to uh, allow environments to be have more automation, more simplicity. Story I heard loud and clear at Ansible Fest earlier this year and through, through the partner ecosystem, it, it's, it's good to see progress. So congratulations and Excellent. thank you both for joining. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, back with lots more here from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE.